It's 3rd of July, uh, 5 p.m. here in Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. And I'm glad to welcome you uh, all on at uh, Astana Finance Days 2021. Uh, this year's theme is uh, Restoring the Growth. And today's panel is about investment opportunities of Central Asia and Caucasus, where investment promotion and attraction agencies' representatives will brief us on their developments, stimulus packages, and recovery plans of their governments, followed by a brief overview and information on investors having geographical exposure to our region. We have located 50 minutes and have nine spokesmen, hoping speakers will fit in five minutes frame to give a chance to all other speakers. Following this event, we will share collateral and extended presentations with the audience and upon request. Now let me give a floor to Ms. Bayan Galant Bulgan Chimek, the deputy chairman, chairperson in charge of FDI and International Cooperation of National Development Agency of Mongolia. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Distinguished panelists, it's an honor to be speaking at the Astana International Finance Days about the investment opportunities in in Central Asia. So I will be sharing my screen briefly and I'll just be speaking alone. Okay, I hope my slides are up. So today I will be speaking about um, what the reform, um, how the reform is taking place in the investment climate in Mongolia. So um, on his 100th day, the Prime Minister of Mongolia, Mr. Ayn Mirgen, has announced the reform in investment climate in Mongolia. So today in this brief uh, intervention, I'll speak about how this investment reform will take place and what it will mean to investors. So the Prime Minister has uh, announced the 100, day, um, 100 uh, projects, strategic projects, which is actually a similar initiative um, to 100 concrete steps by President Nazarbayev. So just very briefly, like Kazakhstan, today's host, Mongolia is a landlocked country with a large territory with an economy heavily dependent on natural resources. And the near future ambition of the government will be to diversify the economy by attracting investment into other sectors, namely the five sectors that you see on the screen. So um, while the mining industry will still be making up of 70% of the FDI, hopefully the number will be diversified along sustainable tourism, agriculture, IT and creative industry, energy and logistics and transportation. Um, the sectors have been identified as um, the most potential sectors um, in the country. Now, the prime minister also introduced 100 projects and reforms within these five sectors and beyond to carry this uh, grand ambition. But what does it mean in the times of the COVID? Obviously, the shrinking space due to the pandemic and um, disruptions in the value chain has affected Mongolia as well. But we're also seeing that this opportunity um, is also upon us if we can use, utilize it wisely. So the investment reform will be really taking stage in uh, four forms. First, we will be introducing legal reforms. As a matter of fact, AIFC has been a pioneer in the field by establishing special zone, economic zone and arbitration center in Kazakhstan. And we are following in the footsteps, I believe. Uh, we will be amending the investment law um, this year. And this will be composed of uh, revolutionary and I would say innovative provisions that's more investment friendly. The second stage really is we are heavily now focusing on protecting the investors. Uh, we are creating a new foreign investment council under the prime minister. At the same time, we are digitizing the services by receiving online grievance into our database. And of course, the importance is to have a strong back office who are composed of uh, highly skilled uh, professionals to handle the matter on a day-to-day -day basis. So that will also be one of the um, uh, essential integral part of this reform. Um, and third step really is about service reform because while the pandemic has been um, 
very challenging at all fronts. At the same time, I appreciate the pandemic for also pushing us to go more digital, go more responsive, and go more uh, less bureaucratic. So Mongolia, uh, through its e-Mongolia reform, are adopting various services um, that can be digitized, and investment services are one of them. Um, then afterwards, we will be really studying the markets and introducing the 100 projects, ensuring their readiness and pitching them into market-specific uh, promotion approach. Recently, we held the forum All Digital in Tokyo and in Seoul, and the success shows that we can continue building promotional reforms under the new strategy. So all this will be bundled up in the investment strategy, which will be released this year, again, under the leadership of the prime minister. So basically, Mongolia is now transitioning from a beginner player to, uh, an, amateur, uh, to an advanced player, an actor um, in the field, in the investment forum. So please stay connected with us through our uh, services that you can uh, access on our website, which is available on the screen. Also, we release a pitch book that is uh, usually composed of um, our investment ready pro projects annually. And we also have monthly bulletins available in English and in Mongolian. So if you would like, please um, access one of these channels and stay connected with us for upcoming events or potential projects in Mongolia. Now, let me spend the rest of my time here today really talking about the potentials um, that Mongolia can offer. So Mongolia's first potential would uh, lie in its energy sector. So blessed with our 300 sunny days, Mongolia has a huge wind and power potential equivalent to 2,600 gigawatts of installed capacity. And while traditional energy will still be important, we will be also heavily focusing on clean energy. And uh, Mongolia is also an important player in Asia's next super grid. Uh, with the technological advancements, uh, those who have the rare old elements hold the power, and Mongolia is also blessed with 31 million tons of rare earth resources. So Mongolia will be shifting to a producing nation um, as enshrined in the investment strategy and the new, gov uh, now new government's development policy planning. So we will be looking at ways to utilize the rare earth elements industry as well. Um, needless to say that Mongolia also, thanks to its rich, um, sorry? Can, can we uh, somehow, just maybe for the for last 30 seconds, um, some wrap up and then we can uh, give a chance to, to other speakers since we like. Oh yeah, the time really runs past then. So as you can see on the screen, these are the potentials that we would like to talk about. And um, in the meantime, we will just wrap up by saying that please scan the QR code to stay connected to us as this time is very limited. It's more of an introduction to the real. Thank you. Thank you, Bulgan, and uh, for your brief. Uh, and let me uh, pass the floor to Deputy CEO of Tatarstan Investment Development Agency, Ms. Marina Epifansova. Please, Marina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much, dear colleagues, uh, dear panelists. Uh, we are happy to be at this panel uh, as though we are subnational IPA. And uh, I'm very interested to hear all uh, the other countries uh, with what they've got, because benchmarking is a very important instrument uh, to see what is done uh, in this uh, after, uh, somewhere after COVID times. Uh, Tatarstan is a region in Russian Federation and uh, uh, majorly what is done is done in the legislation of our country. Uh, but our government uh, gave away a lot of, um, uh, let's say, money to help uh, our entrepreneurs majorly and to, um, to do everything that our population is safe and sound. Uh, no um, extra incentives were, uh, were uh, started in this period. And maybe this would be interesting for you. Uh, we are working in the same environment that we had before uh, COVID times. 
uh, and uh, like we usually say, money never disappears. It is always there and entrepreneurs always find um, ways for new businesses and uh, for new uh, ways to find profit. So our GRP um, decreased by 3% uh, during last year, but at the same time, we've got the e-commerce boosted in our country and in Tatarstan in case, and now in e-commerce, in marketplaces, and in logistics uh, houses and storehouses, we are leading in Russian Federation. So once you need uh, a partner uh, for um, spreading uh, the goods and services, you always know Tatarstan is there in Russian Federation. And this became uh, possible because the population uh, started to buy a lot of um, products uh, through internet. And uh, let's say this industry uh, increased by 30% here in Tatarstan. So you can imagine everything connected with people buying goods increased. This was logistics, this was production of different products, including, of course, the masks, the antiseptics, and so on. And uh, at this point, please know that Tatarstan has a very good, uh, uh, let's say, environment in uh, safety regulation. Uh, we don't have the, the big increase in uh, cases uh, of COVID. So we are a safe place to uh, go on with the business. Also, our colleagues uh, all know uh, what happened uh, after the borders were closed, right? Uh, a lot of uh, uh, foreigners couldn't travel and um, FDIs dropped, of course. Uh, but we also found um, possibilities to deal with foreign uh, 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 direct uh, uh, investments attraction. And for example, we have a lot of uh, sites like Free Economic Zones and their managing companies became technical directors also for the new companies to be settled here in Tatarstan. I hope this information was... Uh, um, of uh, help for you, and um, I'm glad to meet new people uh, we didn't meet before. We have a World Association of Investment Promotion Agencies. It helps us a lot during these times, and uh, I really hope uh, to meet our good friends from Kazakhstan uh, at their next uh, forum. Thanks God this year, Astana Finance Days is available online also. And see you at the fields of other uh, forums like World Investment Conference and World Investment Co uh, Forum. And please keep safe and all the best from Tatarstan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marina. The colleagues from Deputy uh, from the Enterprise Georgia, we have a Deputy Director uh, Enter of Enterprise Georgia, Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development of Georgia, uh, Tarniki Virakishvili, right? Sure, uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much and thank you for the organizers. I'll try to be very brief and quick about the presentations to explain what is going on in Georgia. Next slide, please. So Georgia, again, is on the crossroads between Europe and Asia. So we have good accessibility to Central Asia as well as Europe. We're number seven easiest place to do business in the world. And we have free trade access to about 2.3 billion markets without additional tariffs. On top of all of this, we're actually third least tax burden country in the world. Next slide, please. So country itself is small, but we've been able to attract uh, quite a bit of investments. Over the past five years, we've been around 7 billion in FDI, which is quite good numbers for a small country like Georgia. And in particular, during the past five years, the reinvestment rate in Georgia has been around 45%, which is hugely immense when you talk about how much investors trust in the country. Next slide, please. 
So one thing that we always track is what are investors looking for? Of course, it's always good to develop your proposition, but where are investors going after COVID? And after COVID, we know that nearshoring, for example, will become more apparent and more needed on the world, as well as reliance on single markets on cost efficiency will be important. And this is where Georgia comes in. Next slide. So right now, we're one of the least regulated countries for FDI. OECD actually ranked us on number eighth position. According to Trace Matrix, which is an independent body tracking interactions between businesses and governments, they put us on number one in terms of least need for businesses to interact with the government. And with this, we're number one in Eurostan Europe and Central Asia in terms of rule of law. Next slide, please. Of course, rankings and ratings are always good, but we, what we actually want to get to businesses is efficiency. And on this slide, you can see how much quicker you can do things in Georgia compared to some of our high income uh, average OC countries. So starting a business takes one day, registering a property takes one day, and so on. Every single activity is more efficient in Georgia. Next slide. So we utilize the same idea behind our connectivity and international accessibility. So Georgia is connected to air cargo, trains, trucks, and so on. And as I mentioned, we have access to about 2.3 billion people without having tariffs. So we have free trade agreements with both China and the European Union, please. Finally, we've benchmarked Georgia on cost efficiency idea as well. So we looked at some of our top competitor countries and no matter what aspect you look for, either cost efficiency in terms of salaries or cost efficiency in terms of uh, uh, electricity costs or other costs. Next slide, please. So even electricity, industrial gas, water, as well as salaries are gonna be much more efficient in Georgia than in most of our competitor countries. Next slide. So finally, I mentioned that we're third least tax burden country in the world. So what does this mean? We only have six different types of taxes and that's it. And on top of this, if you reinvest your profits into Georgia or into expansion of your own business, you're not gonna be taxed on that. So we actually have zero tax on reinvested profits. Uh, next slide, please. So my final slide is we actually utilize this time during the pandemic to make the attractiveness of the country even further uh, more important and more prevalent. We introduced special tax incentives for and uh, special incentives for FDI as well. We introduced an FDI grant, which if you invest about $3 million into Georgia, you'll be receiving a cashback rebate of about $300,000. We introduced international company status for IT companies and other types of companies which can benefit from additional tax breaks on this. And of course, we have four industrial zones which can be benefiting from additional tax incentives for Georgia. So thank you for all of that and thank you for the organizers again. I hope I stayed within the time limit. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, colleague from Investment Attraction and Support Department of Ministry of Investments of Kyrgyz Republic, Ulukbek Kaparov, please, Ulukbek, the floor is yours. Hello, dear participants of the conference. Let me to present myself. My name is Kaparov Ulukbek. I would like to present the information on the protection of investments in Kyrgyzstan, on the work that we provided in Russian language. On 29th of January 2021, the President of Kyrgyz Republic signed the decree on the protection of ownership to support the entrepreneurs and also investors. And additionally, additional measures for the entrepreneurs and these decrees were adopted, taken into consideration social economic situation in the country based on the requests of investors and entrepreneurs. Kyrgyzstan has the Council on Economic Reforms under the government of Kyrgyz Republic. Under the Council, we created uh, several working groups, and also we uh, prepared some recommendations. And the group has representatives of business society, uh, profile governmental structures uh, that prepared recommendations in order to decrease administrative barriers for entrepreneurs and also to simplify business procedures. The third is to adopt a normative uh, legal acts in order to improve the interaction uh, between business and uh, legal bodies and state bodies. And these measures are included in 100 uh, days uh, plan of the government. And uh, before the government of uh, Kyrgyz Republic adopted uh, the decree at 11th of December, a number 06, 
on the prohibition of the uh, checks uh, for entrepreneurs that are provided by law enforcement bodies in order to provide favorable conditions uh, for entrepreneurs, SMEs, in order to provide the legal protection for them to eliminate a non-justified interference uh, uh, from law enforcement bodies into the activities uh, of SMEs uh, and because of the spread of COVID, uh, based on articles 10 and also 17 of uh, constitutional law of Kyrgyz Republic, on uh, the government of Kyrgyz Republic, and uh, there is a prohibition on the checks of the subjects uh, of entrepreneurship that are provided by law enforcement bodies, with the exception of uh, those that are provided in the framework of criminal and administrative laws based on the request of uh, legal bodies, uh, the customs unions uh, regarding the goods uh, that are uh, in the framework of customs controls and trade control, and also Kyrgyz Republic undergoes a different uh, indicators and uh, fiscal indicators uh, development uh, from specific bodies. Uh, we are working on the new legal code, uh, tech, um, uh, tax code, uh, and the new code will be provided in the end of the year in order to simplify the procedures uh, for online uh, checks uh, and uh, planned uh, checks and mechanisms uh, that regulate the legal disputes and also service a model of a tax service will be implemented, the mechanisms for the supporting SMEs will be provided. And in Kyrgyz Republic, we also eliminated the control of phytosanitary goods that enter into the countries. 20, 20 seconds to wrap up. Okay, okay. Um, at the same time, the Minister of Investments on Attracting Investments sets another issue is a reconsideration of our economic zones. And uh, this issue raised uh, for many times within the year, but it wasn't implemented. Now it's time for its implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now let me uh, pass the stage to a uh, head of Strategic and Sustainable Development Department of Ministry of Finance and Economy of Turkmenistan. Uh, Mr. Atajan Atayev, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Dear colleagues, let me to express my gratitude for this opportunity to participate in this panel session and to wish everyone health and success. First of all, I would like to share the information on investment opportunities of our state, the economic policy, is focused on sustainable economic growth and economic social stability, investment activities, the increasing of competitiveness in priority sectors of economy to create the economic mechanisms. The key of basis is the activization of investments policy that is based on the necessity to create a favorable climate for investments activities inside of the country and outside of the country in different sectors of economy. There are some technical issues, so the speaker is not heard. Uh, can you hear me well now? Uh, in particular, like, uh, that are connected uh, with investment uh, incentives. Uh, the main sectors are oil and gas complex, uh, agricultural complex sector of uh, transport and uh, connections, chemical and uh, gas uh, chemical industry, textile industry, and others uh, that uh, export uh, focused uh, industries. Uh, the legal aspects uh, of the activities of, for of foreign investors are regulated by the law on uh, foreign investments, on uh, hydrocarbon resources, uh, on the licensing of separate types of activities, on uh, foreign currency regulation and other uh, legal acts. In order to incentivize uh, the growth of investments activities of Turkmenistan for foreign investors, 
legal tax and visa benefits are provided. And also in 2017, the law was adopted on free economic zones that regulates the creation of trade zones, including the zones of free trade, export zones, uh, industry production zones, uh, technoparks, uh, technopolices. And currently, because of the dissemination of the pandemic, uh, we uh, see uh, the economic um, decrease, um, and that is why we take all the measures in order to eliminate the uh, social economic consequences of the pandemic, including uh, different investment resources to uh, invest into sustainable development. I would like to note uh, that the president and uh, the government of the Republic of uh, Turkmenistan took the measures in order to prevent and to protect uh, the citizens of our state uh, from the pandemic. At the same time, the country timely develop the measures for fiscal incentivizing for different types of economy in order to attract investments. And in this regard, we are considered the uh, state budget of Kyrgyzstan in order to optimize the cost for not prioritized investments together. As for the directions of uh, the development of digital services and simplification of registrations of SMEs in online restaurant, the Minister of Finances and the Commerce introduced uh, the digital document uh, flow in order to improve the level of financial state information. And I hope that all these events uh, will help to implement different investment projects and programs. Thank you. Very much, uh, Tazan. Uh, now let me uh, pass the stage to advisor on investments uh, to the acting president of Azerbaijan Export and Investment Promotion Foundation, ASPROMO, uh, Fuad Panakhov. Fuad, please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good day, everybody. Uh, I would like to thank you all for organizing this interesting event. Uh, the topic of our event today is the investment opportunities of Central Asia and Caucasus. Uh, indeed, the region has a huge investment potential, and I believe there is a lot of work that needs to be done in the future to explore this uh, investment climate even more. few words about ASPROMO. As you know, the locomotive of the uh, reforms uh, in all of the government reforms in Azerbaijan is the Minister of Economy and ASPROMO is uh, functioning under the Minister of Economy and our main targets are main functions are the export uh, and investment promotion. Uh, in this matter, the, the, I would like to highlight a few, few things that we're doing right now. We are preparing the national investment strategy for the non-oil sector for the next five years together with the IFC. Uh, it's almost ready and will be presented for to the government uh, in the nearest future. As well as we are preparing a wide document uh, about the global value chains and Azerbaijan's role in the global value chains to further attract the foreign investment to our region. There are also instruments like the free industrial zones, uh, Azerbaijan investment company. The full cycle that might be interesting for a foreign investor is currently functioning under the Minister of Economy. We can say that we are uh, in a way a one-stop shop. So if the foreign investors uh, uh, come, uh, if the foreign investors uh, contact us, they can uh, count on the A to Z support in all the processes that they uh, they will have to face. Uh, as you know, uh, historically and traditionally, the oil and gas industry has been the uh, major industry of Azerbaijan. In the uh, past 20 years, more than $300 billion dollars uh, of investment have been attracted in the economy of Azerbaijan, most of which uh, was invested in the oil and gas sector. And the security that the investors feel about investing in Azerbaijan and the surveys that have been made among them, they always highlight that they really enjoyed and they, uh, the uh, investment climate that Azerbaijani government provides. I can say that in 2019, Azerbaijan was ranked number one in investment promotion by the doing business report uh, globally. And this is a really high indicator shows the work and effort that has been done. Uh, this year, Azerbaijan takes very seriously the doing business report. And this year, Azerbaijan was ranked number 28 among all of the countries and number top 10 of the reformist countries among 
190, 190 countries. Azerbaijan invests heavily in the infrastructure in the past 20 years, uh, thousands of kilometers of railroads, of highways, bridges, uh, and you name it, have been constructed in Azerbaijan which uh, makes the country more attractive to the foreign investors. Um, as you know, on July 1st, as you may know, on July 1st, the, free, uh, the groundbreaking ceremony of the Alat Free Economic Zone has taken place, and Mr. President uh, laid the first stone for the construction of the Free Economic Zone in the biggest seaport on the Caspian Sea, the Alat port. I believe that this will be a chance not only for Azerbaijan, but for, for the countries of the region to benefit from that project. Uh, I would like to mention also, uh, I will, I'm wrapping up almost, just give me 30 more seconds, uh, that uh, the victory of Azerbaijan in the deoccupation of Azerbaijani lands in Karabakh yes, has created even better uh, opportunities for the security and peace in the region. So once again, thank you, everybody, and please come and uh, visit our webpage, visit our sites to get more information. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fuad. Um, let me pass uh, the floor to uh, uh, Zandos Temirgali, the deputy chairman at Kazakh Invest. Please, uh, Zandos, the floor is yours. Hello. Uh Dear participants, dear colleagues, thank you, Nulan. For first, uh, let me thank uh, Sana International Financial Center for the initiative of organizing the, this event online. Indeed, the Sana Finance Day serves a great regional dialogue platform for potential of overcoming the current challenges and ensure the growth during the past pandemic period. And today, um, I'm going to uh, provide a short commentary on the next slide. Uh, regarding our vision on current investment promotion activities in Central Asia and our the further uh, developments. So next slide, please. Well, Central Asia and um, Caucasus is an ancient region with a unique history and culture. And today, you, as you well aware, our region is attracting more and more attention from the global investment community. Moreover, the large foreign investors regard our region as a whole in terms of transit potential, market size, infrastructure development, human capital, and security. Improving the investment climate will have a multiplier effect for the development of the entire region. And that is um, more than 100 million people. So we have a clear common interest. In this regard, the unified positioning of Central Asia on the world investment map is the, of our great importance. Uh, considering the strategic location in the center of Eurasia and rich natural and human resources. Our region is located at the crossroads of current continental transportation and the corridors between Europe and Asia. We have direct access to the market of more than a million consumers, including the countries of uh, Central Asia, Caspian Basin, and uh, China, of course. In particular, Kazakhstan plays one of the roles in this implementation of Belt and Road Initiative. We have direct access to the to these markets, and 25% of these the routes uh, going through Kazakhstan. And I would like to highlight also the middle corridor stretching from Central Asia to Azerbaijan, Georgia, and uh, 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 European Union. Uh, the new roads from China to Europe significantly reduce delivery times since transit time could be reduced by three, four times. Well, thanks to the efforts of the government of the Republic of Kazakhstan, a three-level system of investment support has been introduced in Kazakhstan uh, that includes states, overseas institution, ministries, and local executive bodies. At all these levels, Kazakh Invest, the national IPA of Kazakhstan, has an active role managing the network of representatives abroad and in all regions of Kazakhstan. In addition, we have representatives uh, in uh, the countries that are highlighted here. A systematic work of the government on um, creating the associations and uh, coordinating the entrepreneurs. So on the next slide, you can see the um, outline on investment rights protection in Kazakhstan. First of all, we need to mention the Foreign Investors Council chaired by the president and investment council chaired by the prime minister of Kazakhstan. Additionally, Astana International Financial Center uh, creates great opportunities, uh, not only for Kazakhstan, but for the entire region with um, 
arbitration center and common law court system for the first time in Eurasia. In order to quickly solve the problematic issues, you can see the um, investment ombudsman and the Republic of Kazakhstan's prime minister. So on the next slide, you just uh, see some information. I will not go in depth here on the investment preferences under the investment contract for the investors. It is comprehensive and includes the priority industries. And talking about the investment climate, Kazakhstan is number 25th in the World Bank doing business currently. And particularly the country is number four in the world for enforcing contracts and number seven for protecting the minority investors. So on the next slide, um, you can see the volume of FDI and the combination of all the main factors is expressing continuous uh, improvement of the investment climate and volume of the investment. So since 1991, more than 360 billion of foreign direct investments well, were attracted. 20 to, seconds uh, to wrap up, if you don't uh, mind. Thank you. The Kazakhstan economy, uh, despite the, um, the downturn last year, this year, uh, 2021 we can see very optimistic results preliminary results so in order to wrap up i would like to thank everyone your excellencies and i hope today's discussion will serve an extremely important step in developing unified investment strategy for our region for the benefits of our nations thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh Zondos. and maybe um if we still have a time, maybe I, I can uh, demonstrate also uh, 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 some critical information that uh, myself and my, our team tried to collect on, on our region. Thank you. So on the next slide, we, um, we tried to uh, find out what's happened uh, last year during the pandemic. According to a, um, uh, uh, global market intelligence and uh, Prekin, uh, we see that uh, due to uh, pandemic, the deal making in the private equity industry de declined and in some sectors even stopped. But uh, transactions uh, were put on hold, but further they collected and, um, and the total transaction volume uh, increased up to 168 billion dollars there is a 90 percent increase over the same period the year before and according to the survey uh, more than uh, 75 percent of private equity internationals from asia pacific anticipate that the transaction volumes will continue to improve um, in the next uh, 12 months, we uh, expected focus on the opportunities. The biggest is in IT healthcare, and the least, the least interesting uh, sectors is real estate and materials. Of course, um, uh, the ESG factor now start playing the, the bigger and bigger uh, role in the investment decision. There is a clear um, there is a clear indication that the forty percent of a, of a firms start uh, uh, start planning to work and on improving ESG standards with their existing portfolio. So they now will try uh, improve the ESG situation in their existing companies where they are invested, and also will screen on ESG during the uh, investment investment stage. Uh, on the next slide, we try to, again, collect uh, all the information and some, some uh, try to, you know, um, compare, uh, let's say, our region with, with other regions. And we clearly see that um, the uh, FDI in, in, in our region is uh, expected to be increasing as well among the other uh, regions. Um, maybe on the other uh, slide, we also try to list uh, regional and global partnership and initiatives that somehow can help not only, let's say, to Kazakhstan, but to our region as well to, to start uh, thinking on uh, how to recover. This includes Astana International Financial Center, 
the Central Asian Investment Partnership, the Energy Utility Partnership, of course, the Paris Agreement, and uh, as colleagues from Kazakh Invest mentioned, uh, the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, and uh, on, the, on, the, on the next slide, I also wanted to highlight the cumulative limits from EBRD, ADB, and Eurasian Development Bank now exceeds uh, 57 billion euro. So basically, and you can see uh, like country-wise, the limits are not that used as it could be. So there is a huge uh, opportunity to increase uh, depths, to use the depths uh, to improve the, the situation within the, the, within the markets and sectors. And on the next slide, I also wanted to highlight, this is a quick, uh, this is a quick homework we tried to do to estimate the dry powder, the actual, um, let's say, money that ready to be invested amongst uh, fund managers that have focus in our region. So basically we have not only traditionally, let's say Russia, Europe, UK, US, as a, as a destinations of a registration of a fund managers, but we also can see that some Puerto Rican based uh, fund managers, Ghana based fund managers are also interested in investing in our region. And if you could uh, have a look on the strategies, so the most preferred strategies are the growth capital, and the least preferred strategy is the venture, venture capital. And the estimated dry powder uh, amongst 27, 28 fund managers are more than, so it's basically equity investments, potential equity investments to the region. And, and it's worth around $14 billion. It could be invested in, as an equity investment. And the most pre preferred industries are information technologies and the least uh, uh, preferred one is the oil and gas. And we have agribusiness with increasing, uh, with increasing um, interest from our fund managers as well. Thank you. And on the, on, the next, uh, on the next slide, I wanted also to highlight some findings uh, from survey prepared for OECD IDB of investment promotion agencies where the criteria is used for pri prioritization of a projects uh, to pitch to, to, uh, to market amongst the IPAs in Eurasia. So basically the prioritization is happening via priority sectors, impact on job creation, impact on exports, and the least uh, important uh, factors amongst the IPAs where they prioritize the projects they want to promote is that the type of investor, priority country of a region, and the impact on domestic firms, production and capacities, which uh, leads us to some kind of um, findings that we also wanted to highlight is that Eurasia IPAs um, are more uh, focused on uh, economic diversification and region development. Also, we found out that the COVID uh, nudged the digital technology usage for, uh, for investment promotion as a tools. And furthermore, uh, according to uh, findings from a survey, we, we think that uh, IPAs are more focused to retain existing. As a colleagues from uh, uh, Enterprise Georgia mentioned that the retention, reinvestment uh, now matters uh, for uh, uh, IPAs to retain the existing investors base. And the potential of uh, attracting uh, capital uh, via AFC, as we mentioned, is that we have online registration and licensing of companies. We have all the uh, instruments when you can report your tax, you pay your tax, you have, uh, we have uh, digital signature um, instruments. Sourcing and projects 
and investors and structuring a deal also could be done via investment platform .kz uh, portal. Settlement and resolution of disputes via e-justice uh, also is available via AFC.KZ. Maybe on that, uh, on that note, I also wanted to uh, uh, thank uh, all the speakers and the team to make it, uh, that, that work it hard to make it happen. And I all uh, want to wish you all the best of luck, the good uh, investors base, the ones that will retain, the ones that will reinvest, the ones that will increase their presence, and the ones that they will increase their investment limits to, to our geographies. And I wish uh, all of us best of luck, and I hope uh, to meet and see you in person as well. And uh, I also invite uh, uh, your project initiators, uh, your project pipeline to be uh, also posted on our digital resources so that we can promote not only uh, our, uh, let's say, local projects, but also help to find investors from your geographies for the projects uh, from your geographies. Thank you very much. And on that uh, note, I wanted to say uh, again, thank you and have a good day and weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.